Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a tour of my 2014 Jeep Wrangler. Tell you a little bit what it's like to have owned it for the last seven and a half years. And give you a quick walk around, show you some of the mods, what I've done to it uh, throughout the time of ownership. Uh, it's going away soon, getting something new. Uh, so also doing this video to just remember it for myself. So let's walk, take a quick walk around, start talking about everything I've done over the years. So starting up front, uh, I wasn't ever going to do any real off-roading, so getting an expensive big metal bumper just seemed silly to me. Uh, I was able to source some of those Sahara inserts, uh, painted them to match the vehicle. I uh, thought it gave it a nicer, cleaner look. Put that on myself. It was pretty easy to do. I think I got them for under 100 bucks from someone who probably did change and got an expensive bumper. Uh, so just a quick touch made the car look a little bit better and then I think in like 2015 or 2016 Jeep actually started color matching those instead of the silver on any color they offered. Um, another thing I did up front I just hated that chrome there was no other chrome on the car really so I took off that chrome Jeep emblem put a black emblem. Uh, I think those were offered on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Altitude or whatever and they were also relatively inexpensive I think actually cheaper than a new chrome emblem super easy to take off and put on just really cleaned up the front end. Uh, I also got the JW Speaker lights. I think these were called the JW Speaker 2s. They've since been updated. It's got a half halo. Again, pretty cool look. Um, those stock headlights were garbage. Uh, couldn't even see more than like 10, 15 feet in front of you. Uh, really, these were great. Only thing I'll warn you guys about, for whatever reason, they're a little bit difficult to aim. You can only aim them up and down. And uh, if you then have to take the grill off or anything, <laughs> Some other uh, drivers would get a little bit upset. So if you're putting them on, make sure you aim them right the first time. Uh, I don't mess with them too much after that. Uh, another thing I did, I first bought this car, lived in Brooklyn, New York. It was the first time I had a car that anyone could just walk up and pop the hood. So I got that hood lock that gets keyed with the vehicle's key. Again, super easy install. Just made me feel secure, although in hindsight, it kept me from getting any of those other grill inserts and I kind of doubt someone would just pop my hood and try to steal uh, the battery or whatever else was under there. So continuing to walk around the car, or excuse me, the Jeep rather, I know all the G people are going to be really upset with me. Uh, these are AEV wheels. They were also offered actually as Jeep accessory wheels right from the dealer at the time. Really loved the look of them. I think originally they came with yellow center caps. Uh, always thought they kind of had that 80s Ferrari vibe. Just loved the look of these wheels. Unfortunately, those original AEV center caps, after about a year, looked like hot garbage. I don't know what kind of product they put on it. They just looked awful. So I actually called AEV and asked for different center caps, bought them, and they ended up sending ones that say Jeep on them. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. It's also got a really small AEV spacer lift going to be hard to see but it's just a spacer lift nothing too exciting I really only did it for the look versus uh, any real off-road prowess <clears throat> as far as uh, the rear got the uh, original Mopar Jeep fuel door that's probably overpriced for what it is but I always hated how it looked and I really thought this cleaned everything up nicely just thought it was stupid to have that exposed gas cap again swinging along to the rear i got the jw speaker taillights as well one thing that always upset me with these lights these are the original jeep screws that you reuse when you take off the original and those are the ones that actually came with the jw speaker you'll notice the rust in there i always said i was going to reach out to jw speaker see if they're willing to do anything just never really got around to it another thing they never really covered the original space as they should when I took off the original light, that was a little scuffed up, I guess, from installation, and then I had to touch it up. Kind of disappointed for the cost of these. Uh, I think at the time they were around 250 bucks. I could have bought some fake stuff on eBay for probably a third of that price, and I really expected more, but it is what it is. <clears throat> back here, I got the Magnaflow dual axle back exhaust. Guys, the look of this is spectacular. I really felt it opened it up. Again, if you're doing any real off-roading, you probably don't want a big dual exhaust hanging down low, but I think for the look, well, well worth it.
back, I got the Quadra Tech Jeep Hitch. This was super cheap. It comes with the pin wiring harness, the cover, and again, just felt like it cleaned up the rear. Uh, if you don't have it, it just kind of looks empty back there, especially once you put the uh, Sahara insert there because it's got the cutout and just looked really empty. As far as tires go, man, at the time I did the lift and the wheels, this was a big debate. Didn't know what I was going to buy. Ended up going with the Wrangler Duratrek 285-70-17, about a 33-inch tall tire. Between the lift kit and the tire, definitely the car felt higher driving it that first time, but nothing too crazy. Once uh, I kind of got used to it, the tires got uh, worn in a little bit, felt about the same as stock, and overall felt pretty good. A little bit squirrely in the rain, considering, again, if you're buying this car, just keep in mind you're driving in a rear-wheel drive most of the time. So. If you're on a highway ramp and there's an expansion joint, you hit that a little too fast, the whole front end gets unsettled and sometimes the rear even kicks out on you. So if you're looking at a two door, keep in mind, but I always drove it like a hot hatch anyway. Didn't really uh, drive it probably as intended. Uh, swing around into the interior, really didn't do too much on the inside. Um, I got the original Jeep Mopar sill plates, the Jeep all weather mats the best thing on this car that I installed hands down if you get this truck it does not have a dead pedal more or m-o-r-e you'll find it on Quadratech. they do sell a dead pedal and my god what a difference you can actually brace yourself when cornering another quick thing I did here don't even remember the company I think I ordered from Quadratech. just these inserts here and down here to match what came from the factory uh, again, just felt it cleaned it up a little bit. It was all black before, just added a touch of color. Uh, this is pretty silly. I was able to get some uh, trail rated badges off. Not even sure what car it was. I thought it looked cool with the red, you know, no warning reflector on this door and just thought it added a little bit of nice touch to the inside. Uh, one thing I want to show you guys is that you can actually trick the wife and tell her it's a family car. I have a car seat here for a four year old. She's quite comfortable. A little bit of a pain getting her in and out. You do have to lift the kid in. <laughs> a bit of a lift to uh, to climb up. Uh, and then standing on the running board with half your body in the car, half your body out of the car, trying to strap in a kid. Not exactly ideal, but it will work. If you are considering a JK, storage space might be important to you. On the two-door, it's pretty dismal. It kind of hit me only when I got the truck, realizing like, wow, there's really no space back here. If you're trying to go food shopping I used to end up putting a lot of things on the front seat or literally pushing things up into here um, but in any event you do get a little bit storage compartment in here which I filled with crap over the years not even sure what's in there anymore but uh, that's really about it as far as the tour uh, same thing, put a Jeep emblem back there that doesn't come with it. That's, I think, from like a 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Came across it, found it, stuck it on there. Just thought it looked cool. Maybe it doesn't. You guys will let me know in the comments below, I guess. That's, that's it. So we'll take a drive now, tell you how it drives, tell you what it's like living with it for uh, this time. So what's it like driving and owning this Jeep Wrangler for about seven and a half years? been a blast it's really been fun uh, reason it's fun is that it's being high up like this you don't have to worry about hitting a pothole or a raised manhole cover I mean it just takes bumps like a champ um, the things that you might worry about driving a muscle car a sedan any other car that you know might be on your radar you just don't worry about it here you really you don't worry about if you're parking, am I going to nick my rim, and is that going to be an expensive repair, screwing up the look of the, the vehicle? Uh, you hit the curb, it's all tire. Um, you hit a bump, it takes it well. Potholes don't even affect the car. Uh, the only thing that's, I could say I didn't really like about driving this regularly is it's a little bit loud on the highway, obviously. and considering it is rear wheel drive most of the time you're not going to be putting it in four high unless you're off-roading in mud or driving in the snow 
Um, the short wheelbase made some from made some for some excuse me white knuckle moments when you're on an exit ramp. Uh, it's raining, whatever the case is. And I think the uh, the four door unlimited model probably doesn't suffer from that as much. Might just be a, a two door thing with just this super short wheelbase where hitting a bump and you're turning the wheel really unsettles the rear, sometimes even the front end, you know, you get that bump steer and car wants to dart into the uh, the next lane, which again, at highway speeds could get a little bit scary, but overall it's really been fun. I mean, even just looking at the stoplight, there's a Subaru Forester in front of us and we could pretty much see over, over the vehicle, the minivan in the right lane, same thing, we could see over that. And I think I'm going to miss that. I'm getting a sedan next and I think I'm going to miss having this high vantage point, uh, really seeing over everything. Um, another drawback of driving this for years, no matter how fast you're going in the left lane, if you're keeping up with traffic, going you know even a little bit over the speed limit, when a car pulls up behind you, they always must pass you. They feel like, hey, this Jeep, there's no way he's going to go fast in the left lane. I got to get around him. And that was always super annoying. <laughs> they'd flash the brights or they'd try to pass and uh, that got old pretty quick. Uh, but another benefit of this car, again, I've owned this truck and I'm probably now going to jinx myself, but it, there's no dings or dents on this vehicle. Parking in parking lots over the years, uh, I realized that if uh, someone parks right next to you and they open their door wildly, which might have happened, uh, they're going to hit the running board or they're going to hit those unpainted textured fender flares. So the body of the vehicle is protected essentially from, from what other cars wouldn't be. So for the age of this car and considering that I did use it as a daily driver for a long time and parked it in parking lots and ran errands with it just like I would with any car I've owned before and the body's as clean as it is, it's a testament to just the design of the car being up high and those running boards and fender flares really protecting the uh, the doors and all the painted surfaces. Uh, but again, it's, it's really been fun. I always enjoy driving it. It's just a fun drive. It's different than owning a muscle car, which I owned before this, or just owning a sports car. Uh, it's fun in a different way. It's fun to almost go slow and just really appreciate the drive versus trying to go fast and changing lanes and, and doing things that you probably get in trouble for doing. Uh, especially considering speed limits in most roads here are 25 to 30 miles an hour. So taking it easy, enjoying the beautiful weather, enjoying the top-down driving has really made owning this thing for seven and a half years an absolute blast. And I got to say, I am trading it in very soon for something extremely different. And it was a hard decision to make. Part of me is not sure I'm making the right decision, but... I do have another child now and to put two car seats in a two-door Wrangler was crazy. I know I could have gotten the four-door, but felt like it was time for a change. Uh, so more to come. I'm hoping to do some more videos on this car before it's gone and definitely introduce a new car and, and do some more videos on that once I get it. Uh, but guys, again, first video, really just wanted to give a tour of the truck, tell you a little bit what it was like owning it for seven years. Uh, it's been really bulletproof. Nothing broke on it, nothing major, never broke down, nothing catastrophic. The only thing that ever failed was one of the rear window defrosters stopped working. Uh, really wasn't a big deal. Uh, lived with it. But besides that, just regular maintenance, brakes, oil changes, fluid changes, keeping up with everything, and the truck has been bulletproof. One of the most reliable vehicles I've ever owned. Uh, but it's probably time to, uh, to change, so hopefully I'm making the right decision. Uh, so guys, if you enjoy the video, if you want more of any of the aftermarket stuff, you want to see more of it, comment below. I'll upload a few more videos. Um, open the feedback. You didn't like the video, tell me that as well. If you liked it, go ahead and tell me that. Uh, if you're local, I'm in the uh, Nassau County, New York area, close to uh, New York City. I'm going to be stripping most of the aftermarket stuff from the car. If there's anything you're interested in, let me know as well. 